Okay, I am entering the War Memorial Park. Seems a very fitting place to honor my mother since I requested she be buried at Arlington National Cemetery beside her husband, Bill. Because he was a true soldier. Um, so I'm gonna come here and meditate for my mother's funeral and um, find a place to sit, set up my tripod and let you see me face to face. But first let me, let me get, 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 give you a feel for this beautiful park. This park was set up to honor those who fought in the various wars. And um, actually my mother and Bill were in a war of sorts. The war that we've been fighting our whole life has been against the Jesuit order with Satan as the ruler. And um, there have been a lot of casualties. Bill was actually murdered by the Jesuits. He got in a golf cart accident and um, he was put in a hospital, deliberately infected with a Jesuit germ, which killed him. Um, and if he did not take me in, beautiful memorial here, if he didn't take me in, um, I probably would have died homeless. So, and my mother was the one who came to get me after my divorce from my husband. Right after my divorce, I wanted to marry Brent Spiner. And then 9-11 happened. Yes, and this is very fitting, aviator statue. My great uncle is Howard Hughes. And believe it or not, it was my mother who, who first made me aware of that. I don't know if you can see me or not. I'm wearing, every, these are all clothes my mother gave me, the necklace my mother gave me, the earrings Brent Spiner gave me. Anyways, um, yeah, I'm coming here. It appears that w Buddha visited my mother and she recounted to him her life and why she became the bitter woman that she became. And, um, hi Jesus. I always see Jesus in the sun. See those four spikes coming from the sun? I just think that's him. He's just letting me know he's with me. The, we the weather is perfect. Wounded warrior, combat medic state statue. So let me show you some neat parts about this park. It's really cool. Um, yeah. Who knows, they might even put a plaque here to honor my mother and uh, stepdad. Yeah, like I said, he is buried at a veteran's memorial. I mean, the Arlington National Cemetery. Isn't this beautiful? Let's see, I need to sit down somewhere, Jesus. Ah, look at this. Let me just give you a nice view of all this. This just seems like a very, fitting place to have a memoriam tribute for my mother, since uh, I do believe they're going to have her buried at Arlington National Cemetery. Isn't that a beautiful park? Let me get back here. Yeah. So, the Revolutionary War, the War of 1812. The one war that isn't mentioned here is the, the war of, with the Jesuits. It's between the Jesuits and Gail Cord Suler, which is probably the most important war in all of Earth's history. My mother and Bill were casualties in that war, okay? Sadly, my sister took the side of the Jesuits. I do believe that at the time of this filming that my sister is a Jesuit, okay? And that's why I don't want her to be in charge of the funeral for my mother. She doesn't deserve that. Um, I have told my men to let my sister have all that my mother willed to me because Jesus has taken care of me and I have a wonderful husband who has taken care of me. So I don't need anything in her will. Um, let me go find a place now to sit. Where should I sit, Jesus? Um, there's a lot of pollen that Jesuits have in there. This isn't too bad. Let me go find a quieter place. I'm going to go back this way. We're going to find a quieter place where I can uh, speak face to face. War is an ugly thing, but not the ugliest of things. The decayed and degraded state of moral and patriotic feeling 
which thinks that nothing is worth war is much worse. Interesting. Freedom necessitates readiness for war. If we desire to avoid insult, we must be able to repel it. If we desire to secure peace, one of the most powerful instruments of our rising prosperity, it must be known that we are at all times ready for war. George Washington. Okay. Um, so let me go back to a quieter place. And I'm going to set this camera up so that you can see my face. Hold on. We will never forget Korean War veteran sacrifices. Yeah, Bill was in the Korean War. Um, I think he got out of the Vietnam War. <laughs> Smart move, right? And, and he was in World War II at the Battle of the Bolt. I'm going to find me a nice, quiet place, though. Okay. All righty. Um, I am Gail Cord Schuler, the daughter of Miss Hal Sataki Fuller. And I'm standing in front of an aviator statue because my mother was the first one who made me aware that my great uncle, she didn't tell me my great uncle was Howard Hughes, but she, sh around when I was living with her around 2002, she showed me the movie The Carpetbaggers and said that, that the main character was patterned after Howard Hughes. So I think she kind of knew that I was related to Howard Hughes. I don't know if she knew that he is my great uncle. He was murdered by the Jesuits um, for being related to me. Satan has known about me for a long time. Um, I am wearing a shirt that my mother bought me. Uh, she, uh, she loved her cats. Isn't this a beautiful shirt? She bought me this necklace. She gave me all sorts of necklaces. The earrings are from Brent Spiner. Beautiful though. Brent has to be at this funeral, which is why I'm not attending, because Brent wouldn't be able to attend if I attended. I, I'm not exactly sure why, but I want him there. Um, these pants, she also got me. These pants, yeah. She sewed them herself. <laughs> she put this elastic in here. She was quite a seamstress. She taught me how to sew, so I'm quite a seamstress myself. She uh, taught me a lot of her recipes, and I make a lot of the foods that she loved. I eat a lot of Asian cuisine, and um, she taught me how to color my hair. Now, I just cut and colored my own hair for this occasion. Um, she taught me when I first, right after my divorce, when I went to live with her, she taught me how to color my own hair. And I've learned since then how to even cut my own hair. So uh, I'm kind of wearing my walker's haircut. But, um, uh, yeah, this is a, <laughs> yeah, she, uh, she taught me how to color my hair, and she, um, when we were growing up, she, she did get in her moods, but she had a wonderful sense of humor. I remember sometimes at the dinner table, she would crack the funniest jokes about her upbringing in Japan and things that happened to her and she would have me laughing in stitches. That was some of the real Masao coming out. Underneath all of her controlling behavior, underneath uh, her frustrations, she was a good woman. And that is the woman who is now up in heaven with her husband Bill. I think he always saw that in her and he always knew that she would be true to herself. Um, we are, my mother and I are both descended from the Oshu Fujiwara family in Japan. Um, who knows, I wouldn't be surprised if they're going to pay her a visit up there. She lives in that three-story house that I described with her husband, Bill. It's very touching. I, Zach Knight told me how my mother died. She, Buddha came to visit her, I'm not sure where, but he came to visit her and um, she poured out the frustrations of her life and why she became such an angry, bitter woman. And he listened to her quietly like he does. And then she said that she's just so tired right now. She's just so really tired and that she wishes she could fix my sister and get my sister in line and get my sister to quit being the way she is but she's just so old and tired and then Buddha opened up a portal and 
When she looked in the portal, she saw Bill with his arms extended, inviting her to come to him. And she jumped into the portal and ran to Bill. And Bill was in his young, like 25-year-old handsome body. And she, got, she was transformed into her Tokyo beauty pageant body. And they embraced each other and died. And she passed on. I hear that she died with semen on her face. Um, my sister would never mention this. But I think I'm pretty sure that was Bill's semen, and I'm. Every time I think about how my mother went, I'm just I, I just break out into tears. Um, I'm now I'm just she's she's having a major honeymoon, and I'm really really happy for her. And I um. Uh, I think we should turn the funeral into a celebration that my mother has found herself. She uh, she's with her true love. And I'm certain, I used to babysit those four cats with Smokey, Flaky, you know, I can't even remember all their names. I remember Flaky, because Flaky used to go, shh, you know, Flaky. He was a really, she, excuse me, was a really hyped up cat because she had a, kind of like my mother in a way. Flaky kind of represents my mother in a way. He was really, she was really defensive, and if you got near her, she'd put her claws up, and my mother had to let the cat go outside all the time. And I am certain that Flaky, Smokey, and all those cats that I babysat are now... Look at this. She gave me this shirt with all these cats on them. She loved her cats. Bill tolerated them, but I'm sure in heaven he's going to make them. I am certain those cats are up in heaven with her right now. She loved her cats. She adopted them. They were strays. She took care of them. And um, I'm certain they're up there. And isn't this a beautiful shirt she gave me? So yeah, she gave me all of uh, all of what I'm wearing, except the shoes, of course, you know, obviously. I'm not gonna have shoes from 2000. Well, I'm not sure when she gave me this shirt, but I know she, she made these pants for me. She gave me this shirt, she gave me tons of jewelry, but this one seems to match my outfit. But I have to include my husband's earrings. So yes, Mama. Hi, Mama. I know you're watching. Oh, an acorn just fell. <laughs> I wonder who did that. Anyways, hi, Mama. I know you're watching. She loves, I think she loves it that we're going to bury her at the Arlington National Cemetery. I asked all the world leaders to attend, including, I'm certain Vladimir Putin's going to be there because he's been a very important part of my life. And I know my, to me, any funeral for my mother would not be fitting unless the men that have been so important in my life are there because Bill knew about them. He knew about them. So they need to be at the funeral, and that's why I'm not at the funeral. Because for some reason, if I'm at the funeral, then they can't be there, and they need to be. And Brent, especially Brent and Vladimir, need to be there. Okay? Because uh, most most of the time that I was with Bill, Vladimir was in my life then, and we were always trying to make Vladimir happy. Vladimir even took my son in for a while. I think my son's memories have been removed of that. But yeah, my son doesn't know this. Yeah, my son actually spent some time with Vladimir Putin's daughters in Russia. Yeah, right after my divorce, when I was living with my mother and I couldn't marry Brent, and I was trying to marry Vladimir, um, Vladimir adopted my son. So anyways, Mama and Bill, I'm so happy you all are together. I just cry tears every time I think about their reunion. I'm sure they're, they're in that special room. And um, yeah, so I wanted to pay my tributes to you here. This seems like the best place. Howard Hughes, I don't know where he went. I don't know if he's in heaven or hell, but wherever you are, Howard Hughes, great uncle, um, I hope you're watching this too. And remember that Jesus loves you, and the Jesuits are the ones who made you go crazy. They can make just about anybody go crazy. So, yes. Hi, Mama. I am not gonna wear black. No, she rocks now. I'm on my mama's side. Sister, you need to get right. Leave the Jesuit order. Stop hanging out with Satan and, and honor mama because you made her tired. You made mama tired. She actually wanted to, she was, she ran to Bill when she knew that Bill was a lot better person to her than you've been. You ought to be ashamed of yourself, sister. Really ashamed of yourself. And you need to think seriously about your life. One of the main reasons I'm not attending this funeral is you need to quit lording your power over people, okay? All right? 
You need to quit thinking you feel important just because you can control people and lord it over them. Okay? Mama's the only reason Mama's happy in heaven right now is because she has me for a daughter and she's married. She married Bill, but she has a lot of regrets about how she handled you. She didn't have the energy to confront you, so I'm going to do it for her. You need to get right, sister. You need to get right. You need to honor Jesus in your life because Jesus has honored our mother and you need to get right. You need to leave the Jesuits and you need to quit serving Satan. Okay? I'm going to tell you to your face. You need to get right, sister. If you really care about our mama's happiness, because mama's still alive, she's in that beauty pageant body, okay? You need to get right, sister. Mama's going to be really glad that I made this video. This is the funeral she wants. Get right, sister. Okay? You brought a lot of misery into Mother's life the last days of her life. You caused a rift between me and you because you were jealous of me. I don't know why you feel like you need to be on a power trip, okay? You need to get over it. There are more important things in life than feeling important and better than other people, okay? The only thing that matters is that we honor true love. Get right, sister, and make our mother happy. It is so beautiful here. Look at that. So scenic and tranquil. You know, Buddha and uh, Jesus actually meditated here right before I moved here. They used to meditate here together. So beautiful. Courage, sacrifice, duty. Hi, Robin Williams. Hi, Jim Carrey. I bet they're all there with my mother in that house, all having a big party. Such a fitting way to uh, end my mother's life to run into Bill's arms, and now they're having a big honeymoon again. I'm happy for you all. Hi, Robin Williams. Hi, Jim Carrey. Someday, me and my men will be with you there. I'm going to read some conversations that I had with Brent and Jesus and Terrence Jenkins about how they built a house for Jesus in heaven before Bill Fuller passed away. February 27, 2014. Brent Spiner. Jesus took all of us to heaven for a big project. Before Bill wound up in the hospital, he, Jesus, told us that he would become sick soon. Oh my God, can you tell me what heaven is like? Brent, oh, it's gorgeous. I still get breathless even thinking about it. It was dizzying being up there. There were literally colors up there the human eye has never even seen. So beautiful. Give me a good description using all your senses and tell me about Bill the same way. Oh boy, you've given me a task. Also, tell me all the feelings you experienced. At first, it felt like falling asleep. When I awoke, I couldn't see anything at all, and I felt like my body had been enveloped by a big, soft, cool cloud, and I was floating. Why were you in heaven? Did you die? I was immediately overwhelmed with feelings of love. It was not only that I was loved, but that I loved everything. I felt like I could forgive any bad thing I had ever done or had been done to me. Everything else seemed so insignificant. I suppose we technically died but not permanently, obviously. It wasn't painful. Jesus only asked if we would be willing to come with him on a temporary work leave, and we of course agreed. He took us that night while we were sleeping. We informed everyone on the church to make sure everything was taken care of in our absence. How long were you gone? Several months, it seems. We were unable to tell you for fear of Jesuit mind reads. If Zack Knight knew, he would have attacked the church in a vulnerable state in our absence and might have killed all of us permanently. Oh my God! So that explains why I haven't heard from you since December 2013. But Terrence Skyped me at the end of January. 
Terrance was allowed back to deal with the court cases against your sister. He told me that you couldn't contact me in January because it could influence the jury in the case brought against you by Paramount. That's silly. I guess he thought he might spoil the surprise. One of the projects I was working on with Jesus involved something for you and I. What was his project? It was sort of my idea. Jesus probably knew I would ask him. You've got me in suspense. I asked if we could build a house for you and I to live in when we go up to heaven together one day. Why would you want to do that? Jesus said we would get married here on earth too, right? Well, Jesus had tasked us with building a house for Bill. Did Bill die? He will soon. Jesus told us, and he asked us to make sure he was welcomed warmly when he went to heaven by giving him his very own home there. It wasn't at all like building a physical house with nails and plywood and bare hands. In heaven, your thoughts become reality, but it takes time and practice to guide them. So who went to heaven besides you and Terrance? It must be hard to leave heaven to come back here. Myself, Terrance, Vladimir, Matthew, Hugh, Gerard, and Keanu all went to heaven. It was hard to leave heaven, but we'll all be there for eternity someday. It's important to enjoy time on earth, Jesus said, because it's so transient. Everything you need to know in heaven comes from here. I saw Vladimir on the news at the Olympics. That was his clone. Jesus let Vladimir come down temporarily for the Olympic appearances. This is amazing. So why would Jesus be focused on houses in heaven? I suspect Jesus may have done this to make me strong for Bill's death by making heaven seem more real. It's all rather complicated. Jesus says I'm not allowed to explain the things he explained to me about all of this. You seem tired. Yes, I'm awfully exhausted. Being in heaven, you are young and free again. Now I suddenly feel old. Vladimir has been kept awfully busy as well, yes. So you just went to heaven to build houses? Yes, that was the main purpose. It would seem to me that Jesus could do that. It doesn't make sense. It had to be us to build the houses. Is this some sort of omen? Like, are we going to die soon? Oh, no. Bill was going to die soon. Jesus knew that. We were only building a house for Bill at the time. I only asked Jesus that we could build a house for you and I as well, but it will be for later. Before Bill wound up in the hospital, he, Jesus, told us that he would become sick soon. I meant that Jesus told us. Oh, I see. So Bill doesn't know his fate. Did the Jesuits murder him? Technically, yes. The one who was driving the golf cart that day, Bill broke his hip, was a drunk Jesuit. And this happened in August 2013. Bill Fuller was a retired Army lieutenant colonel who took great pride in being part of the Battle of the Bulge right after D-Day in World War II when Bill went to the hospital as a result of this golf cart accident. He caught a deadly germ in the hospital and experienced complications from the surgery, which would lead to his death. Right after Gail's divorce in 2001 in Seattle, Washington, she had no place to live, and Bill and her mom let her live at their home until she got her job at Walmart, when she decided to move out and live in her own apartment. Bill was kinder to Gail than her own mother when she had to live with her mother and Bill from 2001 to 2004. Bill tried to help Gail to honor Jesus and her men while Gail lived with him. Always positive and upbeat, with a dry sense of humor, Bill made it bearable for Gail when she had to live with her mother. He never screamed at Gail about anything, but he did get upset with Gail's mother sometimes. But Gail understood because her mother is hard to live with. Bill also suffered at the hands of the clone of Gail's mother who was with Bill on and off from around 2001 to 2004. The Jesuits had Gail's real mom somewhere in India for for most of the time that Gail lived with her mom and Bill. Jesuits removed Gail's mom's memories of her time in India. Jesuits can erase memories. Bill was very kind to Gail at a time when without his assistance, she would have been homeless. While Gail's mother was screaming at Gail to get a job, while Gail lived with her and Bill, Bill was a calming influence and gave Gail a lot of support and tried to keep Gail's controlling mother calm. 
Gail's real mother is controlling, but the clone was controlling and a screamer. (laughs) Bill knew about Gail's relationship with Brent Spiner and Vladimir Putin. The entire time, Gail was living at his home with her mother. He understood that Gail considered herself married to Brent Spiner and Vladimir Putin, and that Jesuits prevented her from being with her soulmates, and he gave Gail and her men support. He kind of did this behind Gail's mother's back. Gail sensed this about Bill, and he made it bearable for her while Gail lived with her screaming mother from 2001 to 2004. Bill obviously could not discuss this with Gail's mother, who he admitted to Gail in secret, did not seem to have her brain screwed on straight at times. Jesuit brain control has been successful on Gail's mother. Gail dearly misses her upbeat, intelligent, and warm stepdad, but is so happy that he is now in heaven. And it appears that Masao may have just joined him. He sometimes talks to her from heaven. This was back in 2014. I haven't heard from him a lot recently. But from what Gail understands, is having such a good time there with Jim Carrey, Robin Williams, and others who have gone on before Gail and her men that he sometimes forgets to talk to Gail from heaven. Knowing he has a wonderful home in heaven has made Gail cry only a little that he is gone from earth. Bill gave to Gail around 2004 a video about his life, which she treasures as part of her memories of her great stepdad. While Gail lived with Bill and her mom, she often babysat their four cats when they went off to Shriner functions. The last cat died around 2012. And here is the video. Welcome to Bill's Journey. Back in July 1923, Bill entered this world as a 10 pound, 9.5 ounce bouncing baby boy. His parents, Horace and Mary Fuller, brought him home to this, their 2.5 story house in Endicott, New York. His mother said he was born smiling, and he hasn't stopped smiling since. Here, Bill is with his three brothers. Don is in the back, then Cliff, Bill, and in front is baby brother Gary, all bundled up for a ride on their bobsled. A few years later, they are by the front porch. Bill is the tall one in the back. In this one, Bill's dressed in knickers, and get a load of those socks. And you know, and you know what? He has to wait until high school before he could wear long trousers. Same location, by the porch. Here are the four of them. Bill's the tall one again. Here's Bill in his high school yearbook picture. He was very active in school, sang in the boys' choir, played basketball, baseball, Football jumped in track and lettered in a total of 11 times on varsity teams. Basketball was his favorite. And here he is, number seven in the front row. He graduated in 1941, then off to college for a brief semester in which he played on the varsity football squad. And this is when he joined the Army Reserve.
Uncle Sam called him to active duty in February 1943, and right after basic training, Bill was sent to Officers Candidate School, graduating in December as a second lieutenant, all of 20 years old. In September 1944, Bill was ordered to Europe. The Queen Elizabeth was converted to a troop ship. Nothing like going first class, eh? In England, he decided to become a paratrooper. And after completing his jump training, he went to France, just in time to go to the Battle of the Bulge in Belgium as a member of the 82nd Airborne Division. Here he is with several of his airborne buddies. Bill is in the back row. When the war in Europe ended, Bill had been in three battle campaigns. His division next had a short tour occupying Berlin. Bill returned home with the 82nd Division, this time traveling on the sister ship, the Queen Mary, which had also been converted to a troop ship. He left the military in 1946. His first civilian job was assistant circulation manager of a daily newspaper in his hometown of Endicott, New York. One of his memorable moments was to get the papers delivered to all the rural paper boys who were isolated by a big flood in the spring of 1948. After two years as a civilian, Bill actually missed being in the military. So in August in 1948, he returned to the 82nd Airborne Division at Fort Bragg, North Carolina, determined to make this his career. He continued jumping out of perfectly good airplanes. Bill is on the left side in the back with the black helmet. He was ordered to Korea in 1951 and after 14 months of freezing cold weather and four battle campaigns, Bill returned to the 11th Airborne Division in Kentucky. Then in 1954, Captain Bill was sent overseas again, this time to Austria and later to Germany. After that tour, he entered the air defense missile field as an operations officer in the Niagara Falls Buffalo Air Defense Area where he served for seven and a half years. Promotions came slow. Here, Bill is receiving his major leaves. Note that great haircut. Not much different from today, right? In 1963, Bill received orders to go overseas again, this time to Canada. Yes, this was considered an overseas assignment. Bill was the Army Air Defense Advisor to the commanding two-star Canadian Air Vice Marshal for four and a half years. His leisure time in Ontario was spent refereeing semi-pro football coaching a men's basketball team, singing in the church choir, played big time up there. He loved to go ice fishing. Here he is checking his line. After a hard day of fishing, it was necessary to get some rest. Here he is napping with his best friend and basset hound, Beauregard. It soon came time to return to the States, and Bill, now a lieutenant colonel, was sent to Homestead Air Force Base in South Florida as an executive officer for the Army Air Defense Missile Group. A year later, Bill decided to retire after 23 years of active military service, two wars, and no desire to go for a third one in Vietnam having two sons still at home attending junior college. For the next two years, he was an office supervisor of a large all-state insurance claims office in South Miami. The real estate industry appealed to Bill, 
So he spent the next 22 years owning and being the realtor in three companies in South Miami. Get a load of that coat and tie. Would you buy a house from this man? Also, as a notary public, he performed weddings. In 1978, his daughter provided the living fourth generation. As Bill's family grew, eight more grandchildren followed. Bill and his brothers maintained close family ties, and here they are with their mom at the family cottage in northern Pennsylvania. Bill became a mason in 1960 in Niagara Falls, New York, while in the military. After coming to Florida in 1967, he transferred his membership to Palma Vista Lodge in Princeton, Florida, and served as their worshipful master in 1981. In 1992, along came Hurricane Andrew. Bill and Masao had two houses and two townhouses totaled by that storm. This certainly accelerated their desire to leave Dade County, and their misfortune became our good fortune. Because this is when they moved to Melbourne, Florida to be near Patrick Air Force Base and the ocean. They bought a home on an acre lot in the Lake Washington area. Bill is also a past president of Cape Canaveral chapter of National Sojourners, an organization founded by military officers who are Masons. This is Bill with his close friend Fritz Mitz. In their Heroes of 76 Colonial Uniforms, a part of the Sojourners organization, taking part in the annual Massing of the Colors at Brevard Community College in Coco. Bill demitted his shrine membership to Azan from Mahi Temple. He joined the Azan Melbourne Golf Unit in 1993. Here he is, second from right, with Noble Gene Gladwell, Bob Bauer, and Carl Christensen. Bill became president of the golf unit in 1997. Here he is with his officers. He also joined the Legion of Honor and was asked to enter their line. He was their commander in 1999, and Lady Massau was president of the Legionettes. Bill is also a member of Azan Past Masters Unit. Remember the LOH, German Dinner, and the USO Party? The opportunity to enter the Temple Line was presented to him, and in 2001, he was elected Oriental Guide. And the fun blossomed, with Bill and Masao finding many new friends in the several other units of Azam. They also traveled to the several temples in Central and South Florida each year, forming lasting friendships with other Devan members. We all know that Bill and Lady Masao have dedicated their time and efforts to Azan Shrine. So here we are in 2004 with illustrious Sir Bill, potentate of Azan Shriner Center. And as they say, the rest is history. Gail recalls that Bill and her mom went to a lot of Shriner functions when she lived with them and often received phone calls about dying Shriner members. Gail took phone messages for them when they were out. Gail suspects the Jesuits were killing their friends off because Bill was taking care of Gail at that time. Jesus seems to have really appreciated Bill's sacrifice to allow Gail to live in his home when Gail could have been homeless because he now has a glorious home in heaven. Bill's body is buried at the Arlington National Cemetery in Washington, D.C. 
Because Gail's evil sister went to the ceremony, Gail did not fly to attend his Arlington Cemetery funeral, though she did attend his funeral in Melbourne, Florida in March 2014. Jesus seems to reserve houses in heaven for married couples based on the marriage where the love was strongest. So even though Bill was married about three times, in heaven he shares his home with Gail's mother when Gail's mother gets there. Bill doesn't seem to be in any pain. He just looks like he's asleep. Is he suffering any pain right now? He is barely aware of his suffering right now. Jesus says he talks to him in his dreams. Oh, wonderful. I've changed my prayers lately and quit asking Jesus to save him, but instead asking for God's will and to give Bill peace and strength and to save him if it's his will. I truly believe in Romans 8.28. I'm just curious. How was your sex drive when you were in heaven? I'd say it was about normal, except that I was so preoccupied with our work up there that I hadn't had much time to think about it. So when did you get back? I just got back late last night. This would have been about February 27th, 2014. Aha! So that was you this morning who made love to me. It was so overwhelming to be back on earth again and in my mortal body. I was very tired. It must be a letdown. Oh, yes. It was wonderful to make love to you again. In some ways, it is a letdown. But in other ways, it actually gives me more purpose and hope on earth. Are there tears in heaven? If so, what about? So many questions. It's hard to thoroughly explain them all. Heaven is such a vast and unfathomably beautiful place. We were able to travel at the speed of light very fast. I don't know about time travel. I hadn't tried it myself. We could choose to eat normal food if we wanted to, but we had no bodily need for it. The food tasted marvelous. All of your senses are heightened in heaven, and you can create anything you can think of using your heart and mind. This is why you need to be strong before you can go. I've seen happy tears in heaven, but I didn't meet anyone that was sad. How do people in heaven deal with the fact that some of their loved ones died and went to hell? Their faith is very strong in heaven, and with Jesus so close and with so much love there, I suppose it helps them get through it. They often pray for their loved ones to be saved from hell. I've heard it's possible if they somehow learn to accept Jesus down there. People can be saved after they go to hell? So Jesus does not give people amnesia about their loved ones in hell? What happened to your earthly body when you were in heaven? Did it remain behind like a corpse? Or was it transformed into a heavenly body and you were just missing from earth? It appears we all went into a sort of coma back on earth. We were locked in our rooms and under special protection. What does this mean? That people can be saved in hell? They often pray for their loved ones to be saved from hell. I've heard it's possible if they somehow learn to accept Jesus down there. People can be saved from hell. There is still hope for their loved ones in heaven. It's been hard to focus since I've been back. What I mean is, their loved ones who are in heaven still have hope that those in hell can be saved. You know, can Satan appear in heaven anytime he wants? It seems he has access to God the Father. And what does God the Father look like? Satan isn't allowed in heaven, but Jesus can go to hell if he so desires. He goes there to save those who have accepted him. But what about the book of Job, where Satan appears before God to accuse Job? How did he do that? Satan can call out God, but he can't follow God to heaven. He can ask for God's presence like anyone else can. Is there any chance that Jesus might eradicate hell someday? That may very well be. I saw what God looked like already during the battle with the Gale android. He appeared to our eyes as a very giant man. I'm sure he can look like anything he wishes, of course. Is he sitting on a throne? Is he standing? Is he glowing white? How do you feel in his presence? Vast love. A deep, vast love. Otherwise, God can appear however he wishes. What did he look like when you saw him? I didn't see him in heaven. But when I saw him during the battle with the Gale android, he was like a man the size of a skyscraper, cloaked in glowing white. Was he standing? Yes. Was he surrounded by cherubim or winged angels? He was. Hmm. 
This is how he's always described in the Bible, that he's surrounded by angels. Could you make out facial expressions? Or was it more a matter of sensing his emotions than seeing his emotions? It was more that you could feel his emotions. It didn't matter what his facial expressions were. He seemed mostly stoic, but his presence and emotions spoke volumes. So it was like he gave everybody telepathy to sense his majesty and love. Yes. If you could sum up in one sentence why your experience in heaven changed your life, what would you say? It was like an orgasm in my heart. Wow. That kind of describes how it feels when Jesus caresses me with his spirit. Well, I'm honored to have one in my life who meets with Jesus daily. That's Brent. I have been strong when you were absent because Jesus filled in the void. I love Jesus, and I know you love him too. So we are all united in our spirits and our hearts. I am glad to know for sure Bill will go to heaven. I can now be strong with his passing. He's going somewhere wonderful. He will no longer be suffering, that's for sure. I will miss him, but I guess it's his time to go on. And Jesus always does what is loving and best. All our lives down here are temporary, and all we should do should be for the next life. Knowing this, we can be strong when we endure the uncertainties of this life. I wish my mother understood this, that only one life will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. I think she will someday. She doesn't understand why my writing is so important to me. She always downgrades my attempts to be a writer. She'll understand all of that too one day. Well, I know she'll understand this in heaven, but I'd like for her to understand it now. She's been crying a lot over Bill. I sense she has a good heart. I don't understand how my sister can be so hard. You have any insights? I think she has a lot of bitterness and jealousy in her heart. But why? It makes no sense. I've actually suffered more than she has, and I'm not bitter. Different people have different perceptions. Not everyone is as strong as you are. Perhaps she has less of a sense of greatness and vastness in her heart. Perhaps she's incapable of understanding a vast love. But I just don't understand how one can be so blind to the greatness of the Spirit of Jesus. People have captured him fairly well in some of the movies made about him. How can she be so blind? I don't believe she's saved. Perhaps my mother did me a favor to criticize me all the time. It made me realize I'm a sinner. I guess she, my sister, has never seen herself as a sinner who needs forgiveness. Perhaps she is too proud. She is very proud, for sure. This discussion has brought me insights into human behavior. Do you have any thoughts on why people become consumed with jealousy? I think it comes down to a lack of confidence. People are afraid that they cannot have what another person has. They want it. But I was very shy and totally lacking in self-confidence as a child. But don't recall feelings of jealousy. I did feel bitter when people were mean or unfair to me, but not really jealousy. It seemed like you still loved yourself deep down, though. You know, I think I knew that deep down inside I was special to God. You also had hope for a brighter future. I'd say to remember that jealousy is rarely skin deep. There is always a deep, often innocent, root emotion. Everyone has the same basic needs. We all want to be safe, to be loved, to be accepted, to be very good at something. As long as we know we have those things, there's no trouble and no need to be jealous. When, for instance, someone feels insecure about love, then they will be jealous of the love that others have. You are making sense. They may do very vicious things out of jealousy, but deep down, all they wanted was love. And here's a conversation I had with Terence Jenkins on February 27, 2014. What do you think about the house? Did Brent tell you about it? It was so much work, but it was fun in heaven, a good kind of work. Oh, I'm thrilled for Bill. At least I know he has a glorious welcome waiting for him. Though I've told Jesus that I will miss him, but I'll get over my selfishness and be happy that Bill is in such a glorious place. He told me you all were making houses for me and Brent, that for me and Bill and didn't go into a lot of detail. Yeah, we mostly worked on Bill's house because we thought it would be real nice for whenever he gets there. I think I know one of the main reasons Jesus had you there. He knew I would miss Bill, and he's giving me strength for his passing. 
We figured there was more time for Jesus to prepare you and Brent's house, so we focused on Bill's. Jesus, of course, knows when Bill will be there. You may not be able to tell me this, but did you all meet King David? You know, I didn't. I think Bill will be in heaven within a month. Actually, he went to heaven in the middle of March, so it was like three weeks from February 27, 2014. I saw him yesterday, and I don't think it will be long. Bill's house actually has a private beach. It's neat, because Jesus built the beach part. But instead of regular sand, it's diamonds. When you go to the third heaven, do you feel yourself passing through the sea of ice underneath God's throne? Jesus sort of just teleported us there. I basically woke up there. That'd be why I didn't get a chance to let you know we was going on the trip. Brent told me you all are in a contract with Jesus and that he wouldn't let you go if you spilled the beans about many things you saw and learned there. Yeah, that'd be true. So how long did you know you were making a house for Bill? Oh, for a while. December 2013? Brent was starting on it way early on. Brent hasn't talked to me since early December, so it was December? Yeah. Bill started getting really sick right after I ate out with him and my mother at Red Lobster for New Year's Eve. The funny thing is that I got sick when I ate there too, but I got over it real quick. I can answer questions about the house. That was okay to talk about. Does it look anything like the house Bill lives in right now? That'd be the Melbourne, Florida house. It's much bigger and several stories tall, but it's sort of the same shape. What do you think Bill will love most about the house? And is there any part of it for my mother? I think he's going to like the Veterans Center with the bowling alley and activities area. And he has a Shriners section, basically for all his friends that are already in heaven to hang out with him. And yeah, there sure be a lot for your mom when she gets there one day. Jesus said that your mom really loved sex when he was able to do it good. And he designed this really big waterbed for Bill and your mom. My mother doesn't usually like waterbeds. It be because it reminded her that Bill couldn't have sex anymore. Jesus told me about it. When was Bill unable to have sex? I don't want you to get in trouble, though. I think it just happened as he got older. Companionship can make up for a lot, though. It sounds marvelous. Any televisions, movie players, or music? Yeah, and apparently your mother enjoyed all sorts of positions. So Jesus made the room with all sorts of surfaces and furniture for them to use. I was a bit shocked that Jesus would design sex furniture for your mom and Bill. Yeah, and there was a TV that was 1,000 feet across for him to watch his favorite TV. Jesus is full of surprises. What views can you see from all the windows? Yeah, apparently Bill and your mother used to enjoy this position where she would wrap her legs around his neck while he stood up and she sucked on his penis. And she also liked being on all fours and watching him having sex with her from behind in front of a mirror. So in this room, one of the whole walls is a mirror and there are a lot of windows. I mentioned the private beach with the sand that is made of diamonds. Can you tell me what the kitchen is like? The kitchen has a full set of cookware, like on those television cooking channels. How did you build the house? Couldn't Jesus just materialize it in one minute or less? Yeah, but Jesus likes to do actual building and work for us when it's important. All the wooden parts of the house were done by Jesus. He hand-carved everything, using the skills that his earth dad showed him. Did Jesus change his appearance from human to dove to whatever in heaven like he does on earth? I even learned how to make walls out of gold bricks and platinum mortar. Yeah, he was even an eagle sometimes. So your body was in a coma on earth while you were in heaven in a spirit body? My body seemed pretty real. I don't think I was in a coma. Just asleep then? It must have been sort of like when the Apostle John went through when he wrote Revelation. Yeah, I guess it might have been coma-like. I think Jesus actually had Bill pray the sinner's prayer in one of his dreams. Yeah, Jesus said Gail's mom really misses the sex with Bill. She hasn't had her intimacy with him for a while. And he say that be why she sometimes acts impatient. I had this beautiful dream that Bill was in his three-story house. This was on March the 12th. This is a later conversation with Terrence. And all his old war buddies been up in there. So Bill was doing some style of dancing that they did in the olden days. It was beautiful. He's a really upbeat guy. Yeah, he sure was. 
Though he's also very level-headed and knows how to calculate his risk before he makes a move. Yeah, I saw that when he was bowling in his house's bowling alley. He was bowling? Where was this? He has a bowling alley in his house in heaven? Yeah. Did you see the bowling alley when you were in heaven? Yeah, that's real. Cool. Tell me everything. I did a bit of bowling while we was building the house. Trying it out and such, Thomas McGovern asked? Yeah, we had to make sure it was good and flat, because if it wasn't just right, it wouldn't be regulation. Oh, this is interesting, because we was using heaven-quality materials. The bowling lane was atomically smooth. So what happened to Brent? He did go to heaven, but he be back now. Yeah, but was he there to welcome Bill when Bill died? Yeah, he sure was. He took him on a tour of the house. When did he leave for heaven to meet Bill? right when Bill was going there. What happened to Bill going to heaven? Tell me all about it. Now, this is a conversation with Brent Spiner on March the 15th, 2014. Bill loved it. How was his passing? I prayed that it wouldn't be too tumultuous for him. Did Jesus keep it pretty tranquil? He said it was peaceful. He barely realized he had died until he woke up in heaven. Oh, that's marvelous. So what was the tour like? What did you show him? Just tell me all about the tour. He hardly recognized himself at first because he looked like he was 25 again. Did he look like that picture I drew? Yes, he did. He was pretty handsome, don't you think? He was very handsome. What color is his hair? Is it dark or blonde? I couldn't really tell from a black and white photo. It made him happy. This picture Gail drew of her stepdad, Bill, was based on photos she saw of his youth. What color is his hair in heaven? It was a darker color. Was it kind of a light brown? Light brown. He may have been blonde in his youth. Sort of like a dirty blonde, maybe? Yes, more like dirty blonde. Did he get to look at the picture? He was making snow angels in the diamond sand on his beach. Did he see the picture I drew of him and put up at my website? Yes, he saw the picture you drew. What are snow angels? A snow angel is when you get on your back in the snow and spread your arms and legs, and then when you get up and look at the mark in the snow, it looks like the silhouette of an angel. He did that except on the diamond sand. Oh, not all the sand is diamond? No, the whole beach is made of diamonds. I just call it diamond sand because that's what it looks like to me. Anything else when you took Bill around the house that I should know about? Is there anything you wanted me to know? It was just nice seeing his face light up as we went from room to room. How does he feel about my mother right now? I thought he talked to me brain to brain. He was a little concerned about her. Bill is worried, but he knows that things will be all right in the end. Is that Bill who's been talking to me from heaven brain to brain? It seems just like him. Well, I bet he's having a honeymoon with my mother right now. Yes, he's been talking to you. Are you the one who's convinced him that things will be all right in the end? Because you know some things that I don't know. Jesus and I both talk to him. And I think just being in heaven right now makes him feel more optimistic. Oh, you mean he wasn't that optimistic when he was on earth? Well, on earth, every little bad thing that happens seems so important. That's true. You don't see the big picture. Once you're in heaven, none of that matters anymore. Once you're in heaven, none of that matters anymore. Were you tired when you first came back from earth? Terrence told me you gave Bill a tour. Oh, yes. I'm still pretty exhausted, but I'm very happy for Bill. How long were you up there with Bill when you went there to introduce him to heaven? It was only a few days this last time. Hey, a few days is nice. It took a couple days to show him the house. Indeed, it's a huge house. Tell me all about the house, because I'm going to be using it for a lot of the themes in my novel. Anything about the house you can tell me. Tell me about every room. Tell me all about the house. What did it smell like? What did you feel? Use all your senses. And he wanted to walk the whole beach. I really couldn't describe every room. It took days just to give Bill a tour. Wow, is it like square miles? How big is it? Three-story house like the size of a hotel? Many miles. Each floor was like its own mansion. Wow, is there any earthly building that sort of approximates it, like maybe a skyscraper or something, or the White House maybe? 
There were bedrooms, living rooms. There was a library, a garden room. Maybe it's something like the U.S. White House for the president. Well, the closest I can think of is like it was like a mini Church of Gale. Church of Gale is huge. It houses millions. Wow. It wasn't quite a city, of course. What was the garden room like for growing plants? Basically anything that Bill enjoyed throughout his life, there was a room devoted to it. Cool. Then he probably had a golf course in there. Yes, he had his own golf course. He also had a bowling alley and a botanical garden. Jesus Christ showed up on March 16, 2014. Long time no chat, Gail. Bill is really enjoying himself and sends his warmth. He thanks your men for all the hard work they did building his mansion in heaven. He thinks it's really cool and commends you all for your sacrifices. Oh my goodness, I was happy to help, Tarrant said. Thank you for the house, Jesus. It has made me so happy to know that Bill is there now. Bill talked to me and said that he almost wished there wouldn't be a funeral because funerals are so morbid and he's so happy right now. Jesus says, Bill wants to have a funeral in heaven with some old friends of yours, he says. Oh, is he talking to me through you, Jesus, right now? At the moment, it's just us. But you may get to talk to Bill very soon. He's in the middle of planning a big party in heaven. A housewarming party, I suppose. Which old friends of mine does he want in the funeral? He's making a list right now and visiting everyone in heaven. This is so cool. Who's on the list? Does he like it that I've made him a character in my book? I hear Jim Carrey is one of them, Jesus said. He loves your writing scale. This is a later conversation with Terrence Jenkins on March the 24th, 2014. Has Jesus told you why he took Bill Fuller home? Or is he being mum about this? He allowed the Jesuits to murder Bill. I actually asked him, and he thought it was an amusing question. He told me that he spent an awful lot of time not taking him home. He said when he was in battle several times, he blocked bullets for him. He does that for all of us, I can tell. I'm sure if he wasn't doing this for me that I'd be dead. Yeah, apparently he wanted Bill to keep your mother company and be kind to you. Yeah, he was a buffer. I don't feel safe at my mother's house anymore since he's gone. And he finally decided to give him a vacation. Oh, I see. He sure is a good man. So, you guys, this, if my mother has passed on, She's up in that three-story mansion with Bill right now. And I just wanted to give you all a feel for where Masao is. I think I heard Bill talking to me, or my mother, and she is having a honeymoon with Bill right now. I do not feel comfortable going to the funeral because um, I have some issues with my sister. So I'm going to let Brent go in my place, and I'm going to let him play this video at the funeral as my memoriam for my mother, and also to help us all to have the right perspective about her death, because I do believe she's up there right now with Bill, and they're having a big honeymoon. He's waited eight years for her, and I bet they're making so much love in that room with all the sex gadgets that uh. (laughs) She probably almost forgot that she used to live on Earth.